In this lesson, we're going to run Ableton Live for the first time. We're going to make an important settings tweak in Live's preferences to get it working the way we need it to. And then I'm going to give you a quick overview of Live, including its two interfaces known as Session View and Arrangement View. And then finally, we're going to add the DDJT sound pack into Live for easy access later on. Let's get to it. Right, so I am going to head on over to my Applications folder and I am going to launch Ableton Live intro over in here. If you're in a PC, you're going to find this on your desktop or in your program files directory. So let's double click on that and get going. All right. So this is the screen that we're going to get when you run live for the first time. And this is because we need to authorize the software that we just bought. So just make sure that you're connected to the internet and click authorize with Ableton. All right, so now we are inside of Live. That's really cool. And as I mentioned earlier, the first thing that we need to do is we need to head on over to the preferences. So just go to the top of the screen, click on Live, click on Preferences. Now you're gonna find this window and I want you to go to Record Warp Launch. And over here in Loop Warp Short Samples, click on the drop down and choose Unwarped One Shot. And next, I just want you to make sure that Auto Warp Samples is set to off. Now we're doing all of this so Live doesn't automatically modify our sounds when we play them back. And basically, we don't need it to do that in this course. So make sure that you do these settings changes before moving on. Now, once you've made that change, I also want you to go to audio and go to audio output device. As you can see right now, it says no device. And what I want you to do is to click on the drop down and to choose built in output if you're using your laptop's onboard sound card, or you can go ahead and choose your audio interface. In this case, my audio interface is the Universal Audio Thunderbolt. So I'm going to click on that. And by doing this, that means that we can finally get sound coming out of Ableton Live so we can hear them in our speakers or in our headphones, whatever is connected to our laptop. All right. So once you're done with that, you can click close. And now we can turn our attention to Live's interface. Now let's take a quick tour here. In the center, you've got Live's view. Currently, we are seeing session view. And later on, I'm going to show you what arrangement view looks like. Now over here in the top, you've got the transport controls. You've got stuff like the play, stop, and record buttons. And you've also got other settings here, such as tempo, as well as the metronome. And we're going to explore those later on in this course. And over here at the bottom, you've got the clip and device view window. It's this section here that says drop an instrument or sample here. Now this changes depending on what you've got selected on screen. And basically, you don't have to worry about this right now because you're going to have a lot of time to get familiar with this throughout the course. So don't worry about it for now. Now, finally, over here on the left, you've got Live's browser window. And this is where you can find your sounds, you can find instruments, effects, your plugins, and so on. Now, remember the DDJT sound pack that we downloaded in the last lesson? Well, we're going to add it over here to the browser so you can access it very easily throughout this course. So here's how to do it. First up, click on Add Folder, right? And now make sure that you have Desktop selected and then click on DDJT Sound Pack and then click Open. You're going to find that the Sound Pack has been added over here at the bottom. All right, so now that we've added the sound pack over to Live's browser, let's explore this interface. What you're seeing on screen right now is called Session View. It kind of looks like an empty spreadsheet. Session View is great for performing in a live situation because here you can add sounds to these empty cells. And when you do, they play back indefinitely until you stop them. It's kind of like playing with loops. Now, producers use Session View to perform at gigs for this exact same reason. And they use a controller too, like the Push 2, which is something that Ableton sells. Basically, each pad on this grid pad lets you trigger a sound or loop over here on Session View. 
Now, we won't be using session view at all in this course because as I mentioned, it's better used in a live performance setting. What you really wanna spend time in is in Ableton's other view or other workflow known as arrangement view. It's more powerful and flexible for music production and it looks a bit different too. And you get to it by clicking on this button over here. or pressing tab on your keyboard. So I'm just gonna click on this one. There we go. So this is arrangement view and arrangement view is the more traditional workflow in live. Here you've got a timeline and a playhead that moves from left to right. Kind of like how it is with DJ software when you hit play on a track. Now, this is what producers use to create songs because you're able to add sounds at specific points in the timeline. And you're also able to cut and paste sections. You can rearrange parts. You can add in loops, samples, and other instruments, and so on. Arrangement view is where we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this course. All right, so just to recap, session view is great for performing and you know you can create sketches on the fly in a performance or a gig situation which is awesome because everything plays in an indefinite loop while arrangement view is what producers use to create and arrange musical compositions and musical elements on a timeline in order to arrive at a finished track in the next lesson we're going to start working in arrangement view and we're gonna do that by adding some sounds to your production coming from the DDJT sound pack. And I'll also show you a few playback and editing commands that you're gonna be using throughout your Ableton Live journey, not just throughout this course, but for the rest of your music production journey for as long as you use Ableton Live. So again, really exciting. We're, we're gonna to start to get our hands dirty with Live. So I'm gonna see you in the next lesson.